welcome friends welcome to money and politics again so friends first of all thank you so much to all the subscribers who've subscribed to my channel and i urge all the viewers to subscribe and make this channel grow so we've reached the first very very tiny stage of achieving 50 subscribers now i plan to make it 100 as soon as possible and we'll move on from there the more the subscribers increase the more this channel will grow and it will start appearing on the front page of the youtube search search uh, search results so i urge all of you to spread and share this video and my previous videos as well as the upcoming videos in all the social media platforms be it twitter or facebook wherever whatever platform you use so that we can save our finance uh, our loved ones financially and we can also make them aware of what's coming and what the grand new world order agenda is so friends what have we covered up until now in my previous videos we've covered that this chinese flu was a new world order anglo-saxon plan all along which bill ryan covered and explained wonderfully well then we covered like how the elites of the world have been planning and buying their underground shelters from years and years they knew something which we don't then we discuss about the seed vault that has been constructed years back in the arctic with the investment from bill gates and warren buffett monsanto the rockefeller foundation you know all the notorious people all the people who have been openly supporting the new world order then we covered how this virus is and will be used and is an excuse to phase out the paper money permanently and usher in the new world or a cashless society. We also discussed the stock market and why you should never ever go near gold and silver and why we are facing a deflationary collapse. So never ever think of inflation. So we covered all these things in, in my previous videos. So friends, all those of you who have not watched the previous videos, I urge all of you to go and watch because if you watch one video here and there, you won't be able to get the complete big picture. So what are we going to discuss today? Today we are going to discuss, you can say part two of the coming deflationary collapse. So all those experts who have been advocating to buy metals, precious metals, gold, silver, palladium, platinum, anything are idiots period there are two possibilities either you are intellectually bankrupt or you are deceiving people intentionally by design so I'm willing to take on anyone anyone I'm willing to take on on YouTube live in front of everyone I, I'm willing to debate against anyone who recommends buying gold and silver at this point of time now you people who've been recommending to buy gold, you've been saying this for the last 10 years or so, right? Since the last recession. And as per you, the gold was supposed to go to $3,000 or $4,000 or $5,000 and some even said, oh, $10,000. The world is going to end by gold and silver, right? Where did that prediction go? And let me tell you, all of you who've been predicting this and buying gold and have bought gold and silver and all of, all of your followers who bought gold and silver and are sitting on gold and silver and other precious metals for the last 10 years, I'm sorry you've missed the greatest boom cycle in the stock market. You missed 300% returns and in some particular stocks, you missed 400-500% returns. I'm sorry you've missed it. And where is that hyperinflation that was supposed to come. Where is that? In fact, just leave hyperinflation aside. The Fed couldn't even achieve the 2% inflation target, man. You're talking about hyperinflation. Yes, yes, the US Fed and the world central banks. They prepared money out of thin air. They printed the money out of thin air. Yes, we are living in an age of fiat currency, which is backed by nothing, which is like toilet paper. Absolutely correct. I understand with all this, uh, with all these arguments. I agree. But where is your hyperinflation? Nowhere. It will never come. 
So, all of you who've been advocating people to buy gold and other precious metals, you missed two very, very important points. One is the derivative market collapse. And second is the electronic money, the digital money. So, listen this very, very carefully. All of you who advocate buying precious metals and all of those who agree with them and follow them and think and have an opinion that we are heading towards hyperinflation. Listen carefully, this can make or break the things for you financially. Now, first of all, we don't live in an era of financial paper, in an era of physical paper, like at the time of Weimar Republic where the central banks, they just print money out of thin air and those paper money will just come into the system and it will flood the markets with paper money. Nothing like that will ever happen. Why? We are living in the world of electronic money and it's just the zeros on the screen, right? We are not living in the world of physical paper. Now, please understand why I say that. Just. I will give you my data points. I have concrete data points. You, all those people who don't agree with me, just refute my data points with strong logical points, which can refute my claims. The central banks of the world have been printing money for so long. Still, you know how much physical paper, how much physical dollars we have in the world in circulation today? It's the official figure is around 1.2 to 1.3 trillion dollars only. What's the rest? It's all the electronic money. Now, the major amount of the money is electronic money and that too has not entered the system. Most of this electronic money that the central banks of the world has printed has all gone to save the collapse in the derivative market. That's true. Now, if you've uh, understood till this point, let's move to the next point. Now, no matter how much money the central banks of the world will print, it will be like a drop in the ocean, frankly speaking. Remember, I, th I told you in my one of the last videos that since 2008, the Fed has been printing so much money. First, the TARP fund was introduced of 700 billion to save the automotive industry and the rest of the too big to fail banks. Then the QE1 came, then the QE2 came, then other schemes of buybacks and QE came with fancy words, which normal American and the normal citizen don't understand. Then. In December last year, all of a sudden, $100 billion a day rubber market pumping started. On March 12th, they increased it to $150 billion. Then on March 18th, just one week after that, they said, no, 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 anything less than $1 trillion a day won't suffice. And I also made a comparison how big an amount $1 trillion is. It's half the size of the economy of India, which has 1.3 billion population. So you are pumping half the size of the Indian economy into the repo market each and every day and still the money is going nowhere. Still the money is just sucked somewhere. No one knows where. It's going into the, into the derivative market. It's going to save the world derivative market from collapsing. Hmm? So when I say derivative market again and again, do you guys know how much big the derivative market of the world is? As per the official figure, I'm saying, as per the official figure, the, deriv the derivative market is somewhere around $1.5 quadrillion. Personally, I think it's in tens of quadrillion of dollars, but even if we take the official number of $1.5 quadrillion. Now, do you know how much that money is? Now, 1 billion, when we talk 1 billion, it's 1000 million. And 1 trillion is 1000 billion. 
and one quadrillion is thousand trillion. So when we talk about one point five quadrillion, we are talking about fifteen hundred trillion, approximately. And what's the size of the entire world GDP? Like you put all the economies of the world combined, what's the size? It's around eighty-five to ninety trillion dollars, officially. So here we are talking about sixteen, seventeen, eighteen times the size of the global GDP. That's why no matter how much money you print, it's not going to be sufficient to stop the derivative market from collapsing. There is already a hole in the derivative market, and I told you in my last video as well. Watch out for the Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is the one which will trigger the derivative market collapse. No one can save it, no matter how much money you print. Now, U.S. is taking the initiative to stop the world global derivative market from collapsing because U.S. is the main. All the countries are the culprit, but U.S. is the main culprit, and U.S. can print as much amount of money as possible because they are the world reserve currency. The world business happens in dollars. That's why they are supposed, they are morally obliged to do that. But no matter how much amount of money they print, it will just be sucked into this derivative zombie, like a black hole. It will never ever come into the system, and it's all electronic money. It's not paper money. So just forget about hyperinflation. Forget about even inflation. We are living in a deflationary world, my friends. Exactly what happened in Japan in nineteen eighty nineteen eighty nine. After thirty years now, three lost decades, Japan has never even come out of deflation, no matter how much amount of money they've printed. In fact, the Japanese yen have always become stronger. I'm not saying against the U.S. dollar. Against the U.S. dollar, it has become a little bit weak, but against all the other currencies of the world, it's become stronger. Now, that is fun. Now the second part part is the money velocity. Now, friends, money velocity is the most important factor determining the econ、um, the economic growth of a region or a country or the world. Now, what money velocity is? Money velocity basically means the speed at which the money changes hands, right? Now the U.S. has recently just passed two trillion dollars of stimulus bill. Now two trillion dollars of stimulus means you've just printed one India, the size of an Indian economy, from thin air, without any backing of gold or any other thing. Now even if you've printed it, so I heard the Americans, the needy Americans, and based on certain criteria, they'll be getting twelve hundred. Dollars paycheck, and it will not be paycheck. It will be it will not be be physical money. It will be digital money. And even if those Americans get that paper money, even if those Americans, I'm sorry, get that twelve hundred dollars of money into their bank account, will it change anything? Can the government force them to spend that money? No. So the money velocity will. Is heading towards record low in our history of the world, and that adds to the deflationary pressure even more. Moreover, millions and millions of people will leave, will be unemployed. They will lose the jobs. My friends, just just two days back, the U.S. jobless claims, the the U.S. jobless claim figure, was made public. It was three point three million. Americans who filed for the jobless claims. Now this is the most in the history of the U.S. and this is just the start. We are just two weeks into the lockdown, right? We are not. We are not months into the lockdown. That is coming now. This lockdown across the world will continue for a considerable people of period of time because the world governments don't know how to. Tackle this crisis, this artificially made coronavirus crisis. So this three point three million jobless claims is just when we are fifteen days into the lockdown, and the U.S. president was claiming all throughout that the U.S. is the the U.S. economy is in the strongest, is in the best shape in the history, 
and we are just 15 days and you your companies and are, are just raising hands saying we, we we are not able to survive no so we this global unemployment will reach as per my analysis will reach 35 to 40 percent of the entire world workforce and what this will make what this will result in it will result in an even more strong pressure over this deflationary zombie so the world is heading towards deflation that is 100 percent clear in my mind anyone who still is of an op is still of an opinion that we should buy gold and silver i don't know what to say i'm sure of words either i'm missing something or you don't know what you are talking about understand guys don't listen to any of the precious metal preachers especially those who are my viewers and my subscribers because when you listen to me i cannot see you getting financially devastated anyone who listens to these people will be like in a very very bad shape financially yes when live in an unprecedented times you can also say the way the world the direction in the in which the world is heading the situation and the crisis we are facing as of now you can compare that to the biblical tribulation it will not be an exaggeration you can do that we are living in the biblical end times as you say now as i always say have faith in god establish a personal relationship with god that's the only thing that will sail us through and we'll be okay in the end that's what i believe because i have faith in god now how do you like this video please subscribe and comment and share this among your family and friends on the social media and anywhere help me grow this channel we have to spread this word out and just remember this guy loves you from the bottom of my heart and i will all try my level best to help save you people financially and make you aware of what the global new world order agenda is that is about to be unleashed on all of us so friends signing out until next time thanks for watching take care